Zoom in consideration on motion M75, Polish Heritage Month, standing in the name of Mr. Fonseca. Resuming debate, the honourable member for Yellowhead had eight, and a, eight, had eight and a half minutes the last time that this matter was before the House. The honourable member for Yellowhead. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, I'll maybe give a little bit of a recap because I'm sure that a few weeks ago everyone's forgotten what I had probably stated. Uh, as I said, I, like many other uh, members of Parliament in this House, have a Polish history as well. Uh, my grandparents on my father's side was Ukrainian, but my great-grandparents on my mother's side were Polish. Uh, there was uh, Jako and Mary Zatorski uh, came from Poland in 1906. So that's quite a few years ago that they came to Canada, and obviously the main reason they came was to build a better life for themselves. It was a very challenging time to bring a family of four young adults with them, as well as a baby that uh, Mary was carrying at the same time. So with that, they did prosper in their life here in Canada, which they started on a quarter of land outside of Scarrow, Alberta, which is uh, northeast of uh, Edmonton. So from there they had 13 children, which was quite an accomplishment back then because having so many children and none of them perish at childbirth was quite, quite spectacular. But life was hard, just like anybody else in farming at that stage. There wasn't near the mechanisms that were available at that time. And they had ability to build the house. And actually it was quite remarkable that uh, I was able to go to the original homestead that they had. Now this wasn't their first house they built, but they did build another house in the, in the I think it was the 30s at some time, and the house was still standing, quite a bit in disrepair, but at least it gave you an idea of what the house looked like and that. So it was quite interesting to see that. Now my grandfather, who was born in 1913, uh, Paul Zatorski, decided that uh, there wasn't enough land in that area, so he also went farming and par purchased a homestead by McKay, Alberta, which is about an hour and a half west of Edmonton. And he started his family life there as well, where he had uh, four children, the eldest being Lillian, which was my mother, and four sons after that, uh, Leonard, Lloyd, and Stanley. No, I've got that wrong. It's Lloyd, Leonard, and Stanley, so I have to get that correct for the record. So from there, the life of any farmer was hard because clearing land was not an easy accomplishment. But yet they knew life was going to be far better in Canada than it would have been to stay in Poland. I think one of the problems that they had over the years was the amount of wars that had happened in Europe at the time. And possibly if you look back in history, they, they might not have even been in Poland at the time because the borders kept changing so much that, you know, you might have been in uh, Germany, you might have been in uh, Galicia or whatever other country at the time because the borders did change. So that's probably one of the main factors that that wasn't the most desirable place to raise a family, knowing that you could be in upheaval at any time. But I was getting back to as my grandfather started farming as well because to have now a, a generation of farmers in your family that is quite the thing to knowing that at the time there was I think it was like 92 percent of Canadians that lived in the early part of 1900s were actually farmers and it's quite the exact opposite now where the majority of people live in urban centers and the farming community represents only about two or three percent of the population. So you know with mechanization how much more a farmer can feed now with the amount of land they have compared to what they did back then. Homesteads were quite regularly, almost everybody lived on one quarter of land and as the generations grew towards the 40s, 50s and 60s, that's when people started to expand a lot more and create a better life knowing that one quarter of land wasn't enough anymore because tractors cost more than horses. Tractors could also do a lot more than horses could ever do. And that was one of the reasons why the farms did expand over the years. Now, I, I look at the benefit of the heritage of the Polish community and how much it's contributed to Canada. 
and you start looking like my family or part of my family was very much the building foundation of this great country. And in the West, this is when we pretty much all became part of Canada, is around the late 1800s, early 1900s, is where we started to expand the West. There was um, immigrants that came earlier in the years, but uh, to come in 1906, that was quite the thing for a country. Now, I actually had the opportunity to visit Pier 21 in Halifax, and I wanted to see if I could actually find my uh, family heritage, and, and did they actually come through Pier 21 was the other thing. And the first question I was asked was, how many years ago was it? Because if it wasn't a set many years, you actually weren't allowed to look up records because these people had to have, I think it was 50 or 70 years before you were able to look up their records which I was quite fortunate, it was well over 100 years, but uh, still I was able to look at the records, and the one thing I did notice though is they says, don't be too concerned if all the names aren't correct. Like make sure the last name's right, make sure you know the parents are very close, and if they had children, the names are right. And I was actually able to find that, yes, they did come in April of 1906. Uh, the names Yako and Mary were correct. Uh, although their sons weren't quite right, I think uh, the names varied a little bit, but still I, I thought I had the right people because I don't think there was that many Zatorskis coming into Canada at that time. And, and to give you an idea of how much it's flourished, I have yet to find a Zatorski that I'm not related to in Canada yet. I can't say the same about my last name. I've had several people ask me, are you related to so-and-so? But no, that's uh, quite a different families. So with that, I thought it was quite interesting that we could look up the records and they weren't as close and precise as they could have been. There was only one page of what they had brought with them, some monetary, and that was about it. But when my other parents, uh, Joseph and uh, Dora Soroka came in 1929, there was actually two pages now, so there was a lot more information coming, which was a, a little more appreciative because then it gave you a better sense of what the things that they had brought, uh, what kind of uh, areas that they came from, and it was much more detailed, not near what it is now, mind you, but at least it, it gave you a little bit of history of your family, knowing that um, I was able to find that. So. I think heritage and history are very important and that's why we're celebrating this for, is to acknowledge, you know, Polish History Month, that it's going to contribute in that. Now, I, I do want to also acknowledge that uh, the, the Polish Canadian Congress members and President John Terzak, uh, you know, that they do support this, which is great, and I'm not mentioning they're here in the House because I know that's not appropriate, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, on Motion 75. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Madam Speaker, if I, if I erred in some way, you know, but I do apologize for that, you know. Thank you for that. Um, with that, uh, I know that it's, it's very important to, like I say, honor the heritage of our forefathers and what they have endured and how they've helped and built Canada. And like I said, I just gave one small example of our family. And with that, Madam Speaker, I'd like to thank the House for my time tonight, today here. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Rimouski Nechat. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like, first of all, to commend this uh, bill, which is meant to highlight the contribution of uh, Poles, especially in Quebec. I'd like to say, first of all, that I will be voting for this motion. We are pleased to join our voice to those who support this bill. We, I will now discuss the contribution of the Polish community to our culture. I would like to salute those Quebecers of uh, Polish origin living in the Saint Laurent, Bas Saint Laurent area. There are thousands of Quebecers who are of Polish origin. Among these, 23,000 are immigrants and 55,000 are uh, uh, Quebecers whose uh, ancestors go back further. The first modern thinker 
to have come up with the heliocentric model and said that the sun uh, goes around the Earth was no other than Nicholas Copernicus, a Polish astronomer. For women the world over, a Polish woman, Marie Curie, is the very model of women's contribution to science and to devotion as a woman to a scientific career. I would also add this. What would music be without Frédéric Chopin or Romanticism in Painting with Mikhailovsky? Poetry in the 20th century without Piotrowski? This shows just how much they have uh, contributed, and let's not forget the director, Kieslowski, and his Decalogue. And there's also this and many other reasons are uh, go to show that we have benefited from this community. The first uh, Polish person was Dominique March, and he uh, came to uh, New France in 1750, before the conquest. He had a compatriot, Charles Yakovich, who also settled in Quebec. And after the Second World War, uh, we welcomed many Poles who had witnessed untold horrors, and they found a new home with us. And over the years and over the centuries, their culture combined with ours Quebec and the Quebec Polish community have strong institutions. There's also a citizen who uh, contributed to the Institute of Polish, Polish Arts and Culture. And there were other Poles who were f former members of the Polish resistance, the resistance against the Nazi occupiers and they contributed greatly to the association of Polish women, to that of political and war refugees, and also the example of the Canadian Institute, uh, the Polish-Canadian Institute of Well-Being, and it was uh, René Lévesque who welcomed this particular institution when he was Minister of Health. And the ethno-linguistic character of the Institute and its, its mission to serve Quebecers of uh, Polish origin was recognized by the National Assembly in uh, 2024, uh, 2014, rather. Now, in his, his novel, the great uh, Quebec author, Arlette Couture, introduced us to Yeshi, Jan, and others with their parents, and Surya Palovska had fled the war in Europe, who said things were so sad that even, were so horrible that even the birds were killing each other. And they became part of the culture of Montreal. There were also, there have been Polish members of the Francophonie for a long time, and that has made us even closer. We are two great allies. We were two great allies in history and also culturally. So they have a privileged uh, position in Quebec, both linguistically and culturally. Many Poles have highlighted the importance of uh, French in the cultural and tourist domains. Third, the 3rd of May uh, celebrates the Polish Constitution and also Polish heritage. We will celebrate every year on the 3rd of May the adoption of the Polish Constitution. It was at this date that the Polish nation adopted one of the first constitutions in Europe. It was inspired by the French Revolution and its documents and was inspired by the sages of the Enlightenment. Now, as a comparison, at the same time, our ancestors were also uh, experimenting with the first uh, parliamentary uh, institutions. Since then, 
the French Canadian people, later the Quebec people, was dedicated to its political freedom, its political emancipation and the independence of their country. So the 3rd of May for Poles is a constant source of inspiration. It was so in their quest for independence. Poland never had <coughs> Poland never had an easy existence. And they've always displayed strength and resilience constantly. They fought for their independence. They were invaded, occupied, destroyed and ravaged by totalitarian regimes. Poland, because of its geography and its geographic position, was at the heart of these conflicts. It's at one time, its country was cut up and became parts of uh, Austria, Hungary, Russia, and Germany. There was a short period of uh, independence after the Napoleonic conquest for the uh, Duchy of Warsaw. But they had to wait till after the First World War in 1918 to see Poland again part of the world's map. And as you all know, dear colleagues, Poles were among the first victims of the Second World War. And they have had to deal with huge losses despite their tenacity. And I can mention <clears throat> those who fought in the city of Danzig against <coughs> the SS or who led cavalry charges against the against uh, German tanks. Despite this, during the occupation, the Poles continued to uh, resist, and then there was, of course, the Warsaw Uprising. At the end of the war, over 80 percent of the Jewish population of the country had been exterminated by the Nazis. Warsaw was almost completely destroyed, but resistance was ferocious. Seventy percent of the pre-war population died. This led to a wave of immigration, which had uh, uh, refugees uh, fleeing the country. Then the country was under Stalin's control, and part of their original territory was annexed and Poland was just a vassal of the communist regime. And when they finally found freedom, the Republic of Poland was created, as we know it today, based on a semi-presidential model, like in France. Through all those years of occupation and mistreatment, Poland developed its own uh, charter as a symbol of its independence and nationhood. And to conclude, Madam Speaker, I'd like to remind everyone as a Quebecer that we work hard to achieve our own national independence. There are many commonalities between our two countries, two peoples who were conquered by foreign invaders and, and colon colonial powers. And so we need to remember the resilience and the commitment of our Polish compatriots in their fight for independence and sovereignty. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Resuming debate, uh, the Honourable Member for Edmonton, Stratcona. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and it is always a pleasure and a delight to stand and represent the people of Edmonton, Strathcona. And it is a pleasure today as the foreign affairs critic for the New Democratic Party to also stand today and speak about M75, Polish Heritage Month. Uh, I, am, I was in Poland less than a year ago, and it is, it is, um, it is a country I need to spend more time in. Um, I'm, I'm delighted to stand here and talk about the contributions that Polish Canadians have made to Canadian society, to Canadian economy, to our politics, and to our culture. Madam Speaker, the Polish community began settling in Canada over 160 years ago, 
many of those settlers were in Edmonton, in Alberta, uh, where we have a very strong and important Polish community. I remember being present for the unveiling of the strikingly beautiful and impressive monument celebrating the centennial recently. It perfectly captures the strength and the determination of the Polish settlers who came to Alberta to build a le better life for themselves and to help build a better life for all of us in Canada. Polish settlers helped build our cities, our institutions, and over the past 160 years, Polish immigrants and their descendants, teachers, engineers, doctors and lawyers, architects, business leaders, and yes, even politicians, have made Alberta the vibrant and prosperous place it is today. You know, speaking of, of politicians, I have, to, I have to think of my friend Thomas Lukasik. Uh, it's not often in this place that a New Democrat stands and talks about their friend who was a conservative uh, member of the Legislative Assembly. But, but Thomas is a, is a real champion for human rights, something that I believe deeply in. And I, I was so proud to know him when he worked so hard to get help for Ukraine for Ukrainians, to help Ukrainians settle in Edmonton during the, the, the illegal war in Ukraine, but also that he stood up for Palestinians and helped raise funds and, and raise support for, for Palestinians now as, as Gaza is, is seeing such a, a terrible humanitarian crisis. And I have to say, Madam Speaker, that there are uh, over 190,000 Canadians who cite Polish as their mother tongue. And, you know, there are, there are, there are things that I, I humbly say that I'm quite good at, but pronouncing Polish words is not one of them. Uh, I don't come from a Polish background. Heather McPherson, as I'm sure you can all imagine, is, is, uh, is Scottish. And so my staff have written out a number of greetings that they expected me to bring uh, to the Polish community tonight. And, and I think my greatest gift to the Polish community will be to not bring <laughs> those greetings. <laughs> uh, I can say, though, that, that one of the things, one of the more selfish things that I, that I, I feel about this, this uh, opportunity for us to celebrate uh, Polish culture and, and um, the Polish-Canadian connection is the ability for us to eat Polish food. Um, and in Edmonton, that is something that we have a great opportunity to do on a regular basis. So knowing that we have um, each May as Polish Heritage Month feels to me like an excellent, excellent opportunity for us to, to be able to learn more about Polish cuisine, and I am very excited about that. That is just one of the very rich and meaningful contributions that the, the Polish um, diaspora has made to our country. However, Madam Speaker, on a, on a more serious note, such a day as today allows us to, to take an opportunity to recognize the Polish people and the Polish diaspora for their resilience and for their determination. Um, it was the resilience of the Polish people that got them through wars and occupations, including that by the Third Reich, which led many average Polish people to join the underground resistance. It was the organization of workers striking in the dance shipyards that led to the emergence of the Solidary Trade Union, Union a group that would later participate in talks that led to the fall of communism in Poland. And it's these, these hardy qualities that Polish Canadians bring to Canada, along with their, their kindness, their sense of community, things that I think all Canadians should embrace. And I, I wanted to take today as an opportunity to thank the Polish people, both here in Canada and in Poland, for the kindness and the generosity that they have shown over the past two years. After Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine, millions of Ukrainians sought safety and comfort with their neighbors. I was in Poland both in March um, last year and in the previous March and saw immediately after the invasion how Polish people opened their arms and welcomed uh, Ukrainians into their community. You know, we saw... We saw um, we saw welcome centers where displaced Ukrainian women, mothers, and children were elderly 
were, were welcomed into those communities. We saw the support that was given by the community and how difficult it was for the Polish, for, for people in, in Poland to do that and how they did it anyway. You know, Canada will always stand with, with Poland. Poland is our NATO partner. And we will continue to fight to make sure that there is an end to Putin's illegal and unjustified war. Because we know that this is happening on Poland's doorstep. The Canadian government must do everything possible within its means to continue to press for there to be a withdrawal of all Russian forces. And I'm also heartened to see the Polish people continue to embrace democracy. It's another reason that May 3rd should be designated as Polish Constitution Day here in Canada. Recently, the Polish people voted in elections to restore political centrism to Poland after years of right-leaning rule and to vote in a government that will work to restore and strengthen Poland's democratic institutions. New Democrats strongly support the recognition of Polish Heritage Month every May. We welcome M75 and we hope to be able to celebrate Polish Constitution Day and Polish Heritage Month this year in our ridings. We're calling on all parties to quickly pass this bill to ensure that this year Canada will have its first Polish Heritage Month. And we're calling on the Liberal government to ensure tangible, stable and predictable resources and opportunities for the Polish community across Canada so that they are able to share their rich, vibrant and delicious culture <laughs> with all of us. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and congratulations to the member. Resuming debate, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, the Minister of Justice and Attorney Thank General you, of Canada. Thank uh, you, Madam Speaker. It's always a pleasure to see you in the chair. Uh, look, I'm thrilled to stand and support uh, my colleagues today in seconding uh, M75, uh, recognizing the great contribution that Polish Canadians have made to building this country, deeming March 3rd, Polish Constitution Day, May 3rd, I'm thinking of May 3rd is Polish Constitution Day and the month of May every year as Polish Heritage Month. Uh, first, I want to congratulate and thank my colleague from Mississauga East Cooksville on this initiative. It's been a long time coming. I'm proud to be part of this and I want to applaud him for that. Uh, Madam Speaker, as evidenced by my as, as evidenced by my faux pas at the outset, I'm proud of my Irish heritage. I am not Polish. But I'm hoping that by the time I sit down, people here today will understand why I am proud to have such strong connections, not only to the Polish community in Etobicoke Lakeshore, but throughout my entire life. The ties between our two countries are strong and they run deep. The, the profound impact of our Polish-Canadian community on Canada's social, cultural, and political and economic landscape cannot be overstated. Polish immigration to Canada reaches back to as early as 1752, over 100 years before Confederation, Madam Speaker, when the first documented Polish immigrants set foot on Canadian soil in Montreal. While it would be naive to think that they were not struggles during the early decades after the arrival, like many immigrant communities who came after them, the Polish people endured and pushed forward to become an important part of the foundation of Canadian society. Our friendship and companionship have grown over the years. Polish soldiers trained in southern Ontario for the First World War. We fought together at Dieppe. Canada was the first country to approve Poland joining NATO in 1998, and our military cooperation continues as we work together to secure Eastern Europe against Russian aggression. Our soldiers trained together in Latvia. We both share a vision for a democratic and unified and independent Ukraine. We both are adherents to human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. Together we fight and continue to work against tyranny. Economically, we are strong partners. In 2022, there was over $4 billion worth of trade between our two countries, up from $2.85 billion in 2018. The partnership is growing, Madam Speaker. The Polish people's dedication and perseverance have left an enduring mark on our nation and continue to do so. Our history books are filled with the names of many people of Polish descent in every occupation. Since the beginning of our parliament, Madam Speaker, Polish Canadians have been in this house. 
I think of Alexandra Edward Kurskowski, an MP from 1867 to 1870. I think of the Honourable Don Mazankowski, who served with distinction and honour as our Deputy Prime Minister. There was the Honourable Stephen Proposky and my friend Jesse Fliss, who served in this chamber. We have him to thank in large part for, Kent, for uh, Flag Day, which we will be celebrating on February 15th. I think too of Ted Opitz. Today we have a number of MPs who served in this House. Today we have a number of Polish uh, MPs or descendants of Polish families in our chamber, including four of my colleagues, one of whom is, sits just over there from Windsor Tecumseh, and also a member from Calgary Shepherd across the way. Provincially, I think of Bonnie Crombie, who's an effective voice for our Polish community. She too served in this chamber. And of course, in my own riding, there's Chris Corwin Kaczynski, KK, who served municipally in the city of Toronto, proudly calls Etobicoke Lakeshore home, and who has worked forward in getting us here today. Culturally, Polish Canadians have enriched the social and cultural fabric of our country. I think of pianist Janina Filkowski, whose fingers have danced on piano keys for decades, entertaining people everywhere. Who didn't grow up listening to Peter Zowski on CBC? However, he was not the only famous Canadian Zowski. His paternal great-grandfather was Sir Kazimir Zowski of Polish nobility, who was a prominent engineer in Canada and worked on the Grand Trunk Railway and the Welland Canal. Sir Kazimir Zowski was knighted by Queen Victoria. Canadian legend Getty Lee, I didn't know this until recently, of Rush has been one of the biggest Canadian music influence in history, certainly in my lifetime, and has very strong Polish roots. His parents were Polish Holocaust survivors who emigrated to Canada. Actress and activist Lisa Ray, who grew up in Etobicoke, has a Polish mother. Media mogul Moses Zimmer, mother too, was from Poland. Olympians, Penny Oleksiak, Hockey legends, Wayne Gretzky, current captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs, John Tavares, all have Polish roots. Today, Canada's Polish population is estimated at over 1.1 million people. 2.71% is con of the population, and it's concentrated mostly in Ontario, Alberta, and British Columbia. I would like to thank the Canadian Pol Polish Congress for all it does to promote awareness of and respect for Poland's history and heritage and then, like my friend across the way indicated, I'm pretty sure if I look around, I could see them in Ottawa today. The president, I know for a fact, is here in Ottawa today, and I want to thank him for all he's doing, along with all his colleagues. I'm proud to say the Polish presence and influence in my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore is incredibly strong. Etobicoke Lakeshore is home to the Consul General of the Republic of Poland. I would like to thank Magdalena Fiskulkowski, the Consul General of Poland, for all she does in Canada and in Etobicoke Lakeshore. <laughs> the, the faith of Polish Canadians uh, is a strong and is an inspiration to me. I think of St. Mark's Parish, St. Teresa's Parish, Polish Full Gospel Church, all located in Etobicoke Lakeshore. There's many other organizations, Madam Speaker. The Polish Association of Toronto, the Polish Teachers Association, the Polish Cultural Centre located in my constituency. There's a Polish seniors group that meets at the Stonegate Community Health Center, and we also have the Polish, the National Polish Union branch, number one in Etobicoke Lakeshore. I feel so incredibly fortunate to have such a vibrant Polish community at home. But it, it doesn't start there. It goes back to, I was born and raised in Thunder Bay, Madam Speaker, as you know. And Thunder Bay has a proud Polish community. I spent my youth going to Mass at St. Mary's Lady Queen of Poland Church with my mother, my father, and my two brothers. I remember going vividly going to 7 o'clock Mass on Sunday, on Sunday nights. Uh, I have fond memories of going and buying pierogies and eating that fine Polish food at the Polish Hall in Thunder Bay. I sent my brother a text earlier just before I got up and said, you, did the Polish Hall have a name? He said, no, it was just called the Polish Hall. Um, I remember it well, which is, anyway, we won't go there. Um, every year I look forward to uh, Polish celebrations, including in the neighboring riding of uh, Parkdale High Park and the, the Rochesville Polish Festival, which this year marks its 17th anniversary. Something to be very proud of. My point is that Polish Canadians make Canada, continue to make Canada, and have always made Canada a better place, Madam Speaker. Mr. Madam Speaker, M75 is far beyond acknowledging the historical bonds connecting Canada, Canada and Poland. It celebrates the importance of those contributions. 
When you look at people in the Polish community, you see how they proud they are to be Polish, but you see how proud they are to be Canadians. And that cannot be overlooked, and that's why this motion is so important, Madam Speaker. So to designate May 3rd as Polish Constitution Day, and to dedicate the month of May as Polish Heritage Month, goes beyond symbolism. It recognizes and captures that importance. And I want to thank every Polish Canadian for the contribution they made to this great country. And I look forward to supporting this motion. And I know I don't have to ask, but I'm going to do it anyway. I want every member in this House to join us in doing just that. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Berthier-Masquinonger. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. It's a huge pleasure for me to speak to this topic, M75. And it's also a pleasure to see you smiling in the chair again, Madam Speaker. So I wish you all the best. Look, it's to be expected that this motion will pass. It's only natural. But the question is, how long has it been that Polish Canadians have been contributing to the vital vitality of our society and contributing to a whole host of institutions? How is it that this motion hasn't been passed already? So, okay, better late than never, let's do it. I believe my colleague from Kamouraska stole my thunder a little bit, but we will be voting in favor of this. Chanel. This is to mark what the Polish nation has brought to Canada and Quebec. There are many francophones in Poland. This creates unique ties between Quebec and Poland. 79,000 people in Quebec stated that they were of Polish ethnicity. 55,000 uh, were born in Quebec. Their story is the same as ours. We share our story because they have been here for a long time. I know that, well, sometimes people are sick of hearing us talking about Quebec. Well, we keep talking about Quebec because we know that you secretly love it. We always talk about our history, the Charter of French Language, La Révolution Tranquille, the Quiet Revolution. And throughout, Polish descendants have been with us because they have been here since 1752. In 1752, it wasn't Canada. It was in New France at the time. Dominique Batz, a fur merchant, landed in 1752. After that, Charles Vascovitz, who arrived in 1757. These individuals fed into our commonwealth in New France, Nouvelle France at the time. Earlier, my colleague mentioned one of the most remarkable people who created an important institution called the Canadian Polish Wellbeing Centre. This individual arrived in 1943. Before arriving in Quebec, she was a member of the resistance. She was a mother of three. Everyone should take a few seconds to imagine, especially if you're parents. If you're not a parent, you can still understand what it means to be a member of the resistance during the Second World War, with three children in tow. These people left their homeland, came to Canada. Sometimes they were forced to do so and were happy that they stayed. But we have to understand their sacrifices, how heavy the burden was. We have to recognize this value. And I believe, Madam Speaker, I think that I am not wrong in saying the following. Today... The Polish people are the ones who understand and cherish their independence because they lost it a number of times, and it has been threatened for a long time through violence, through occupations. We need a lot of resilience. And so I would like to commend their strength, I'd like to commend their courage, and I would like to commend their resistance. Thank you for participating in building a better society here.
Poland is part of Quebec's culture. It's part of our literature as well. Arlette Couture wrote Ses enfants d'ailleurs, which tells the story of the exodus of a Polish family who came to Grand Fleuve in uh, the periphery of Montreal. And since then, the Polish community has flourished and has created a beautiful mosaic of people in our region. So I'm very happy to uh, lend my voice to this debate to create Polish Heritage Month. It's with pleasure that I will participate in celebrations with Polish Canadians. I invite everyone to do so. For example, Polish Constitution Day on May 3rd. Constitution Day that was first celebrated after the horrible years under Germany and Soviet Russia. I will be at other events that uh, highlight the rule of law and freedom. These people, Madam Speaker, know what independence means, truly know what independence means. Of course, in Quebec, we had our own unique history, and I don't want to com compare Quebec's history to Poland's history. We are far from the same level of intensity, but we've both sought to protect our nations and to make our nations flourish. And I'm sure that the day we will become a nation, we will do so with Quebec's Polish community. And they will continue to add wealth to our history and to our lives. We will vote for the motion. But it's a slight issue with the motion. You'll, you'll understand what it is. It's with the wording. That is very Canada-centric. Don't want to offend anyone, but it talks about multiculturalism in Canada. Our vision in Quebec isn't against multiculturalism, of course. It's a different way to reach multiculturalism. It's interculturalism. We believe that Polish Quebecers have brought so much wealth that we have absorbed this wealth in our values. And we have, a, because Polish Canadians are generous, they're hardworking, and we are so happy to live with them, Madam Speaker. I'd like to thank them. And I noted that there was a delegation here with us this evening. And I think that this is very important. I have no more time. Oh, no, I still have a little bit of time. I, well, I remember that we can't, I, I can't say that anyone's in the, uh, in the stands. That's not my job. That's yours, Madam Speaker. In any case, our respective societies, Canadian, Quebec societies that currently share this parliament are very happy to commend the Canadian and Quebec Polish community. And it's with a lot of enthusiasm that the Black Quebecois will vote for this motion, celebrating the strength and dynamism of this uh, people. Some people may have been offended that I'm talking about Quebec independence. Some people are offended. Some people are used to it by now. But I would give, like to give you an example. If you have hope that perhaps one day something may happen, perhaps you need to speak among yourselves. A federal commission was created with Bill C-40, without bilingualism being essential for its justices, which should be impossible in a country with two official languages, French and English. I saw that in my newsfeed. I would be, have been remiss not to mention it. My colleague, Fé Rivière du Nord, at the Justice Committee, rightly spoke against this. We are very much for celebrating the strength and diversity of Polish Canadians and Polish Quebecers, and we look forward to sharing our evolution together. When we live together, we share our history, we share our experiences, and that is how we will make a just and equitable society. Uh, all I want to say to this community 
is that we also believe in independence, and we hope that we will be able to share our independence in a sovereign Quebec. Thank you very much. Good evening to one and all. But I still have a little bit of time, so I'm going to be a bit risky. I'm going to try something, and I hope that if anyone listens to me, they will forgive me. Vieksor, Poche de Aiwan, I, Zekoji, Sekivudzi. Which means, which was meant to mean good evening and thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Resuming debate, uh, the Honourable Member for Windsor West. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and it's an honour to rise here on Bill uh, Motion 75, Polish Heritage Month. I'm, going, month. I'm going to read it so that we have it into the record. Um, and I think this is important not only just for the Polish community, but it's also a country of Canada, the multiculturalism we have. We also have a country that's being built by people coming here, contributing in many different ways, not only just in terms of a heritage aspect, but also through the economy and also civil society. And, and that's been the experience of the Polish community in Windsor that has done so much for so many different years, but also reflects one of the reasons why we have Heritage Months and why we actually have recognition for different, different weeks. In Ontario, there already is a Polish Heritage Month. But this motion calls for A, that the House recognize the significant contributions Polish Canadians have made to Canadian society, economy, politics and culture, and the importance of educating Canadians of all ages about the core values that Polish Canadians have imparted to the strength and diversity of Canada, and B, in the opinion of the House, the government should reflect upon Polish heritage for future generations and designate May 3rd of every year as Polish Constitution Day and the month of May of every year as Polish Heritage Month. And why that's important not only just to the Polish community, it's also important for other communities where we embrace the multiculturalism, we embrace the participation of citizens that come to build a new life here, and that they bring some of their culture with them, they bring some of their experiences with them, and they get a chance to shape our democracy and our communities and our society. And that's been the experience that I have had with the Polish community before politics, when I worked at the Multicultural Council of Windsor and Essex County, uh, which also has a Polish carousel uh, as part of the Carousel of Nations, and as well when I became a city councillor. And I do want to recognize this one person, there's many to recognize, but Jerry Boritsky, um, with regards to um, our Polish community and the Canadian Business and Professional Association of Windsor, uh, is very important to recognize the contributions one can make. Now, Jerry has been recognized with the Cross of Merit in Poland, the Order of Merit of the Republic of Poland, the Queen Elizabeth's Dupe Diamond Jubilee Medal, and many other different things. But I got to know him as just a citizen sitting on our panel at the Race and Ethno Relations Committee of Windsor and Essex County uh, when I was chair of that actual committee. And he brought forth the idea for the city of Windsor to twin with Lublin and, and have our, our city expand its horizons. And I saw for a particular situation evolving that took not only from the streets of Windsor and Essex County, the reflection of the settlements that we've had from Polish citizens from the 1800s to the for forefront of the businesses contributing, uh, being part of uh, our armed forces, being part of our citizens when they do work at home, our auto industry, uh, manufacturing, a number of different avenues that took place from very professional to basically blue collar, and continuing to grow that relationship with Lublin and making sure that we had civic engagement by all. And so several trips and delegations we went over and it convinced me that there's no doubt that you can achieve just about anything. And when I came here as a, a member of parliament back in 2002, I was fortunate to be by then uh, Joe Comartin, the former member for Windsor Tecumseh, uh, back in 2007 when we started to press for waiving of the visitor visa of Poland citizens. And we knew that was a big issue with regards to getting uh, some justice on that file but having you know, a government at that time, we weren't sure what was going to do the right thing. Eventually it did, and I want to give credit to then Minister Jason Kenney, who actually worked hard on this and does deserve a note in this chamber uh, for the hard work of making sure a change took place. And that was one that was adopted by all the corners of the House here, and it's something that I think again shows that when we put our test to ourselves at different times, we can find more in common than not. It doesn't seem that always this, this is a time and a place that it is, it is, is conducive to that, but the reality is we can get some good work done on that. 
So one of the things I do want to note with regards to the situation that we're going to have with this uh, Heritage Month is that we do have other ones that are coming and emerging as well too, but also in the Polish one here, I'm hoping the government allocates some resources to make sure that we actually have information, we have supports for programs, services, at least if there's not with officially with this motion because that can't be appropriate at this point in time, but it should set a standard that makes sure that places like in Windsor, the Dom Polsky, where we actually have events and heritage months um, for Ontario, but now hopefully this will take place, and other types of expressions of cultural engagement, uh, that there are going to be adequate supports and programs, uh, and that has happened at different points and different times over the years. And so for Windsor and Essex County, we've seen this heritage play itself out in a lot of pride. I did mention with regards to World War II, we had some of the veterans um, that were in our contingent of, of support for the Canadian Armed Forces, and then we had them come back home uh, to our community and be some of the hardest workers and also contributing uh, in the, the aspect of not only just developing the Polish community, but also contributing to the sectors that we have um, in, in, in our, about our country. So Polish Canadians did become emigrating to Canada in 1858 in terms of when it was recorded. I'm sure others came before that. But it's, it, it's important that this chamber right now, not just Ontario, recognizes the Heritage Month because it does go across from coast to coast to coast. And we can reflect individually, and I think this happens quite a bit as we've heard other members, and including myself, talk about the um, local community that you have and the experiences that you have. But as you travel with this job across Canada and across other places, including the United States where I've been to many times, I've noticed that in Canada, when it comes to many of the different communities that we have, there's a special flavor and element that comes with the pride of having cultural celebrations that include other communities. And where I come from, Windsor, Ontario, we see that across the river, where two miles basically to the south, uh, so the north of us, we have Detroit and we have the United States, where they do it differently than ourselves. In fact, it's not that they don't have those cultural connections, but there's a special element to Canada here that's rather unique. So having the opportunity that I have, I find that these motions that we have here, very important, but at the same time, hoping that they're going to continue to actually encourage the government to make sure that heritage and other types of budgetary expenses that may be seen as soft to some members in this chamber, where they might see that this budgetary expenditure is a loss for supporting the cultural celebrations, but also the engagement with other countries and other different groups and organizations, like at Winmar Community was Lublin, where we had the city of Windsor step up to help out and other citizens. They actually create opportunities for economic development and diversity. And I, I can tell you, Madam Speaker, I, I was one of the individuals put on the initial list of, of being banned in Russia. Um, that was something not only did I mind, I was say, yeah, thank you, I'm getting clapped for it, but the reality is when I got the, uh, the notification, my response was, I hope I can make myself go higher on the list. Uh, and I think it's because some of the work I have done with regards to this issue, but other things, and the importance that we have as this country right now and the Polish community to support so many of the brothers and sisters that they have that overlap their societies. So it is symbolic in many respects through emotion. It's not legislation, but it does create an opportunity and a path forward. But then at the same time, I do know it actually does reflect an important grounding that's necessary. And again, you know, for our community, when we celebrate Polish Heritage Month and from the province of Ontario, it's a very special event where we have not only just professional um, uh, discussions, we have celebrations and we have food, of course, and a whole different things. Uh, we've seen even actually displays and other things that Jerry and the rest of the group have put together that have actually educated new people about our Polish contributions, whether it's the arts, the cultures, um, whether it's in the economy, all those different things. And those things actually lead to economic development. And I can tell you that our delegations that we've had over the years have strengthened the relationship and economic opportunity. So as I wrap up, Madam Speaker, I want to say I'm grateful that I've had the opportunity to speak here. And again, this is very important for the Polish community, but I think it's also reflective about of a country that accepts and also wants to have the civic engagement of other cultures in the very fabric of how we do things on a daily basis, and most importantly is to recognizing those through special relationships in days and months that actually show this. And for Polish Heritage Month, it's well time and due, and I appreciate the mover of the motion. <clears throat> 
It is now time for the Honourable Member for Mississaugas Cooksville for the right of reply. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and it's great to see you in the chair. Vitam Jenkuya. I am delighted to wrap up this, this beautiful discussion that we've had here on my private member's motion, M75. The diverse voices of my colleagues spanning various political affiliations and regions of our country have resonated with unwavering support, declaring May as Polish Heritage Month and designating May 3rd as Polish Constitution Day in Canada. The unanimous backing from members across the spectrum is a testament to the profound contributions of our Polish-Canadian communities. I want to thank my colleagues, the members of Parliament that have spoken today, member for Yellowhead, uh, Rimuske Nijet de Muscata Le Basque, uh, Edmonton Strathcona, uh, Tobacco Lakeshore, uh, Berthier Maskinoge, and, uh, and we had the, the member for Windsor West that we just heard from. And thank all those that participated also in the first hour of debate for their thoughtful expression. And I express my heartfelt gratitude to the Polonia in Canada, whose roots were traced back to the arrival of the first Polish immigrant in 1752, over 272 years. This community has evolved to its present-day Polish diaspora of 1.1 million. Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, uh, Nicola, Nicholas Copernicus, the eminent Polish mathematician, doctor of medicine, theologian, and astronomer, once said, to know that we know what we know, and to know that we do not know what we do not know, that is true knowledge. Well, Speaker, what we do know is true is the profound impact of the Polish-Canadian community on Canada's social, economic, political landscape. Their contributions in arts, music, entrepreneurship, academia have enriched our society immeasurably. This motion owes its existence to the dedicated leaders within the Polish community who have tirelessly supported me and fellow members here in sharing their stories of Canadians of Polish descent. And I extend my appreciation to those watching, and we know some are, before, are with us here in the chamber today, whether in person or through our parliamentary channel. Speaker, while I cannot name everyone, I want to express a big thank you to His Excellency, the Ambassador Witold Jelski and his officials, to the Canadian Polish Congress and its President John Tomczak and Vice President Dominic Rosak, as well as the entire executive team of the Canadian Polish Congress. I'd also like to acknowledge the efforts of the various Canadian Polish Congress branch presidents and their boards, our Canada Poland Parliamentary Friendship Group, and our chair, who was born in Poland and represents his community of Windsor Tecumseh in this House, and I know will be working hard for our first flag raising here when we get to commemorate May as Polish Heritage Month. Speaker, I had the privilege of joining my Polish community friends this past weekend at the Polish Combatants Hall for the New Year's annual Oplatek, or Wafer Reception. It was a moment to break bread, reflect on the past year, and celebrate the achievements of the Polonia in Canada. This year marks the 90th anniversary of the Canadian Polish Congress. And we took the opportunity to express our gratitude to Canadian Polish veterans who bravely fought for the peace, freedoms, and democracy that we enjoy today. Now, I feel like I, I have been adopted by the Polish community. And like the, the speaker, uh, we come from Portuguese descent. So maybe like John Tavares, Portuguese and Polish coming, uh, coming together. But it has been a true honor. And, you know, at, at that function, I received the Ignacy Jan Padrowski, and I hope I said it correctly, Medal of Recognition. And I want to thank you. It, it's really, it's with pride that I wear it here today. Thank you very much for this recognition. I extend a heartfelt thank you to our Polish Canadians for Poland's steadfast support for Ukraine during these challenging times, my wife being of Ukrainian descent. Speaker, the Polish spirit, determination and tireless efforts exemplify their commitment to enriching Canada with Polish culture, a strong work ethic, deep faith and unparalleled resilience. Madam Speaker, 
when we think about what, is, what we are recognizing today, we are celebrating Polish Heritage Month, May 3rd Constitution Day, from coast to coast to coast. I look forward to raising that Polish flag here on this hill in Parliament, along with the Canadian flag. Dziękuję bardzo, Nedzia Polska, Nedzia Canada. Thank you very much. Uh, it being 6.23, the time provided for debate has expired. Accordingly, the question is as follows. Mr. Fonseca, seconded by Mr. Baker, moved... Uh, the, uh, Mr. Maloney, I think? Yep. Mr. Maloney. Um, moved that, A, the House recognized the significant contributions Polish Canadians have made to Canadian society, economy, politics, and culture, and the importance of educating Canadians of all ages about the core values that Polish Canadians have imparted to the strength and diversity of Canada, E, B, de la vie de la chambre. In the opinion of the House, the government should reflect upon Polish heritage for future generations and designate May 3rd of every year as Polish Constitution Day and the month of May every year as Polish Heritage Month. The person wishes that the motion be carried or carried on division, uh, or if a member of her, okay, the Honourable Member for Mississauga East Cooksville. And I'll ask for a recorded vote. Pursuant to Standing Order 93, the division stands deferred until Wednesday, February 7, 2024, at the expiry of the time provided for oral questions.